Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and I'm uh, gonna do something I haven't done on the channel in a while, which is a budget build series. Um, so for those of you who are unfamiliar uh, with this, what we do is effectively build three variants of a particular deck. In this case, it's the Rakdos Sacrifice deck. Um, we start with a budget version, which is no more than 10 rares or mythics. Then we have a mid-budget version that's like some upgrades that takes you around 20 uh, rare or mythic wild cards. Then we have the fully tuned version. So kind of a build series that we go through and you can add cards as you accumulate them through your collection. Uh, so this is one of the tier 1, 1.5 decks that goes around. Usually places every day on MTGO. Um, so it's one of the better decks in the format. Um, so what I usually try to do too is do a quick write-up on Aether Hub as well afterwards. Uh, just explaining some of my card choices. Um, but the theme of the deck is Rakdos Sacrifice. So what we're trying to do is sacrifice our creatures for value. Um, and the way we can kind of get with the payoff is both Cat Oven. So Cat Oven drains your opponent of life each turn and you get it back. And then you also have Mayhem Devil that whenever you sacrifice another permanent, it deals one damage to any target. So that's kind of the core of the deck. The nice thing is they're all uncommons. Um, so that's going to be the structure going forward. Um, in the deck as well, you have Claim of the Firstborn, which can steal opponent's creatures and then uh, kill them that way. Uh, you could also sacrifice their creatures for value. Um, in this budget version, I'm playing Footlight Fiend, which is a, an option to uh, deal with early aggro decks. Uh, it can, When it dies, it deals one damage to another creature, so it can kind of trade up. You can also use it with uh, Witch's Oven to kind of redirect damage, just say like a down tick to fairy or something like that. Uh, Meyer Triton is to fill the graveyard uh, for stuff like Woe Strider to get back. Uh, it's more so played with the Kroxa variant, um, where we'll be playing in a, a future build. Um, but we'll see how it works in this. It's still a 2-1 Death Toucher. Uh, so another kind of budget card that we're playing in here is Slaughter Priest of Mogus. So whenever you sacrifice a permanent, it gets plus 2 to end the turn, and then you can sacrifice another creature for 2 mana or an enchantment, and it gains first strike till end of turn. A couple uh, Angrass Rampage, uh, just the ways to force your opponent to sacrifice, so another way to have removal. Uh, and then in this particular build, we're using six rares for uh, three Midnight Reapers, three Woe Striders. Midnight Reaper is card advantage whenever a creature dies. Um, and it with like a Cauldron Familiar, you basically just drain your opponent for a life each turn and draw a card, um, which is a good card advantage for an aggro deck. And then Woe Strider lets us sacrifice our board on demand and scry, uh, and then that gets around targeted removal, as well as with Mayhem Devil, it's kind of like a combo kill. This can also be escaped from your graveyard and gets you some value that way there. Uh, mana base wise, we're using three Blood Crypts. I'm using three, uh, four Blood Fell Caves instead of the uh, Fabled Passage or the Scry Land, so that's something of note for the budget version. And then the sideboard wise, uh, we have Red Cat Melee versus the aggro matchups, the red-based Agonizing Remorse versus Control, Epic Downfall versus like Cavalier decks, uh, the Fires deck, stuff like that. Shield Breakers versus like um, Mirror matches or for like Clover matchups. Uh, Scorching Dragon Fires versus basically anything that we need removal for with the Exile upside. Freak's Liberations versus like Fires or stuff like that, and then Act of Treasons for the bigger decks when you can steal like their Cavaliers or something like that. Um, so we're going to run it through, play a couple games with this. Um, so just to kind of quickly show you, this is what we're ultimately going to be building towards. Um, so of note, what we're adding into the future versions is like stuff like Priest of the Forgotten Gods, Crocs, uh, Tyre Met, improved mana bases, and just improving the numbers. So we'll get there over time, um, but for now we will just play... Uh, traditional standard play. Uh, because it's a budget deck, we'll try it out just in regular play. It's more to demo the deck. Um, if we kind of get mana screwed early on, or like just kind of weird games, I might just concede the match just to get a proper demo. I'm using these more as instructional uh, videos as opposed to necessarily, you know, tier one, we're going for mythic. Um, with the uh, non budget version, then I'll play in ranked ladders. So, as always, as we get started in this matchup here, if you do enjoy the content and want to show your support, as always, if you can drop a like or a comment on YouTube, it goes a long way to helping with the algorithm there. Alright, so this is the only downside of playing in the free play. If the opponents don't like their turn, their hands, they will concede. 
Um, so yeah, like I said, if you can like or subscribe on YouTube, it goes a long way to helping out. If you want to do catch us when we are live on Twitch, the easiest way as always is to uh, drop a follow on Twitch. Uh, all those ways are free and they do help out the channel immensely. Uh, so this hand here is a little awkward. We don't have red mana. Opponent does go first. We have Footlight Fiend and Oven. So we have a couple plays. If they're on a creature based deck, we draw red cards. I can start stealing their stuff and sacrificing it. I think we mulligan though. Okay, this hand's better. Um, I'm going to put back a Mayhem Devil here. Just play out the Blood Fell Caves on one. So. Could be a couple things, unsure right now what we're up against. So we'll get an idea. Okay, so it's ramp perhaps. Oh, this is probably the uh, Matt uh, Bant mid ramp deck. So we'll see if they bounce this with Teferi. Um, I think mana efficiency wise, it's better to do this this turn. They can drop Nisa. Because if they have a removal spell, then at least we get a card draw off this. Okay, so they just go Knight of Autumn, defensive. Because this lets us go double Meyer trade in this turn. Okay, so we hit a cat. I'd like to hit an oven, because then we can start getting cat back. Wolf Strider is actually nice, because we can escape it back next turn. And then I can use it to start drawing some cards. So I can one, two, three, four, year four to escape back. So that's our play next turn. Because what I can do is I can use it to scry and draw cards. I think opponent realizes these have death touch. So we do get to draw three cards here. Surprised they did that on their turn. You're five to escape, so I'm actually gonna hold off a turn here. Because what I can do here is Midnight Reaper. This is a trick where you can give it haste. And then I can take down their Teferi. It's kind of a roundabout way of dealing with that. I drew a lot more lands than I wanted to off that, to be honest. Only 14 lands left in our graveyard, so we've seen 10 of our lands so far. It's a little unfortunate. Would have liked... Um, that lets me play a double. So I think what we do here, because what I can do is I can sacrifice, I can attack in with this. I think we just go like this and then pass the turn. Because I can bait out the attack with this and then I can sacrifice something in response to put a point of damage on it. Okay, Dream Trawler is probably something we're not beating at this point. See if they attack in. Um, I think I just want to scry now. Don't want the land. That's actually pretty good. Uh, 
So I can force them to sack one thing. I think we wait till next turn to do that. Because the problem is I want them to attack him with this first. So that way they can't block with it. And then next turn I can have a multiple attack and then try to get this to block and then sack something to deal damage to it and then Angrath's Rampage. This does open us up if they play another creature though. Do they have enough in their graveyard? They do have enough to get Uro back. Which does suck. They escape Uro back and now we have to get a little creative with how we uh, attack in. This is probably a tough matchup on the face value. And they attack in for seven, gain seven. We'll see if they attack in with the crisis as well. They probably keep it back on defense. This can probably swing the match enough. Probably sacrifice the goat here just to scry again. If I can get an oven, it will help. But it's a lot of damage we got to deal to them now. Also, drawn a lot of lands. Jeez. Okay, so tack in like that, see how they block, interesting. So that draws us a card. Okay, we got an oven. I think we just do this now. Take some power off the board as well, but we're probably dead on this one. It's gonna be a tough one to come back from. So the nice thing is Cauldron Familiar can come back. Yeah, we lost this one. With Nisa, it's enough of a clock that we're not going to be able to attack in. So we know what we're up against now. Um, so Agonizing Remorse is something we want in. The Epic Downfalls. Claims are actually okay in this matchup because you can get Uro as well. Um, otherwise, I think the Farika's Liberation can be good. These Mogus aren't that good. Probably get rid of the Footlight Fiend. Actually, so these at least have Death Touch, which is reasonable against what they're playing. Just play it out like that. Like Footlight Fiend can get rid of um, the little uh, 
Knight of Autumn, perhaps. They're going to keep Knight in. Now what the opponent knows we're on, they probably shift their strategy a bit. We're probably going to see some uh, Devout Decrees coming out of their board. Play first. We'll keep this. We can disrupt their hand here. Hopefully uh, tear them apart and then find a threat. If we can find a cat in the next few turns, it would be good. Okay, that's not bad. We're going to get rid of this Krasis because their hand's not doing much here. They do have an Aether Gust, so it can tuck away like a Mayhem Devil. See if they, uh, okay, so they opt to play it like that. Um, I think I'm just going to play this and say go. I want him to get a couple more cards in hand so this agonizing remorse can be more useful. Let's see if they bounce one of our ovens. So line's actually good there. Uh, sacrifice is a planeswalker. And just get this oven down. There was a play maybe we should have mayhem deviled, but I think I like giving it haste on a future turn. Um, they may tap out, and then that gives us an opportunity to like snipe something. Um, they opted to go untap land here. They could have Frill Mystic up. I don't know if they're playing that in the side, but we'll see. Okay, they opt the growth spiral. They might have double growth spiral here. Doing this now seems a little ambitious. Um, I think we just get rid of the crisis. It represents card advantage again. This hand's been a bit awkward just not drawing a creature. So we're just going to play this out. They can Aether Gust it. They may opt to let it come into play and then just um, Conquer's Death. Going to decline this one. Because right now they can just get to Fairy back. Well, that's fun. So here... See what they do if they bounce. Okay, so what I can do here is... Mayhem Devil. Steal their land. Go to combat. Attack Nisa. Tap it for mana. Pay for this. Sack it. And then deal a point of damage to Teferi. So they can Conquer's Death, unfortunately, and get this. That gets back to Fairy. It's a very difficult matchup. We don't have something like Priest of the Forgotten Gods or Croxa to disrupt. Oh, shit. I had to um, Witches up in that. So if we don't draw gas here, I think we're done this one. I'll just fire up another game. 
We had a disruption, we just didn't have the early clock, and then we kind of fell behind there. Probably made more sense to just bounce the food. Yeah, we're dead here. I think missing stuff like Noxious Grasp in the side might be wrong, so that might be something if we play another game that I might want to add in. I think against all these green base decks, we probably want something like that as a clean answer. But uh, this is still where we kind of learn with the deck. So let me just give Arena a quick reset, and we'll fire it up for another game. I'll probably do two matches with each of these, just because we're going to be playing across three builds of the deck, so you'll get some exposure that way there. Uh, I'm not going to do like an hour with each of the decks, considering that they're all the same archetype. So I think I might actually make that change now. Uh, budget Rakdos. Let's put some Noxious Grasps on the side. Probably two of. Um, Act of Treason could come out. Probably a Shield Breaker and then play two Noxious. So we'll make that change. This is a nice thing, just in between matches. You can just make these little switches along the way and then you can kind of take it through there. So hopefully everyone's doing well in the quarantine current situation, staying safe at home. Um, so we'll, we'll play these out, play these three. If uh, there is any suggestions, if you'd prefer more historic content or um, more standard content, do let me know. Uh, like we'll draw into Lions and I guess triple Footlight Fiend, especially if this is like a red base matchup, will be pretty good. So stuff like Fabled Passage helps fix our mana for color purposes, but with Mayhem Devil, it also gives us some gas that way as well. So ideally we draw a land here and then we can double one drop and then follow it up with like a Midnight Reaper. So that's great. Um... I mean, we probably just go another Footlight Fiend. I guess we maybe may be playing the cat. Gives us a bit more flexibility. Like, if they attack with Robber here, we get the value. Myra Triton's more effective of a play here. Gains us some life. So I can poke in with two here, I think. If they want to block, then they end up losing the robber, so it's a consideration they have to make. Cool. So this lets us draw some cards now. And like, we can be Ember Cleaved. Okay, they go Steamkin here. I would really like a Sacrifice effect, to be honest. Because if we had Sacrifice, we could Machine Gun down their deck. Even like a Claim just to steal their Annex would be good. So I am really excited to get Ember Cleaved here. Low Strider is probably the best draw for us right now. We have a 7% chance of hitting it. Okay, so Torbrand's actually kind of terrifying. Okay, so we can... Deal Annex. I think we hold on to this because if they have an Ember Cleave, we might be able to kind of play around that with an Ember Cleave turn. Like if they attach Ember Cleave to it. 
So they're kind of flooding here. But they just drew four extra cards. Okay. Literally just need a sack outlet. Give me a sack outlet. Okay, so they get rid of the Mayhem Devil, another land on top. Let's see if they want to start forcing through. Okay, so they're going for everything here. They do have some pumps that are available. <sighs> they hit our Woe Strider. Okay, so they don't have Ember Cleave, so let's put our Death Touch blockers here. And then the first strike damage happens on these two first, which kills Robber of the Riches. So I think we just do this. Seems like a very good trade for us. So these die. Trigger here, trigger here. That gets some tokens. <laughs> Still no sack effect. So we can shoot down. One of these. Refill our hand. Oh, that's actually pretty sweet because we could steal the Steamkin and then I could pop the mana and then sacrifice it there. So what I can do is take this. Pack in here, play this out, play this out. Should have probably played the tap line. And then just say go. So I can steal some stuff next turn too. I think they got a little impatient there. So they do have the first strike available. So I think what we do is just take this damage, draw a couple cards. Because then my cat could come back. We are at 9 life, so we have drawn an obscene amount of lines. So I'm going to hold off just in case we draw a Mayhem Devil. Okay, we drew another cat. Uh, target player sacks creature. They're going to lose one of these, but it's just more to clear them off some more attackers. And then my cats could just keep coming back. Um, so this is a Dragonfire in matchup, a Red Cat Melee matchup. Agonizing Remorse is interesting, and I think we bring it in just versus, uh, like, it's a clean answer to Annex, but that's probably it, so maybe not. So, Meyer Triton was okay that match. These don't seem that good, and neither does Angrass. Rampage can take them off an Ember Cleave, but I just don't see them having too many Ember Cleaves. I think we just run it like that. Say go. We did get the first match, which is nice. Just gonna close my window. Sorry for the close up. It's getting some fresh air, but uh, it's a little chilly for a t shirt. Is 
Sweet. 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 So it's a little worse versus like first strikers, but this having death touch, filling our grave if we find a low strider or a cat. In this particular matchup, Footlight Fiend excels just because of all the one drops. Done an in inexplicable job of just drawing all lands and then binning all threats. So that like because this isn't like historic or old mono red where they had chain whirlers. Okay, so we can actually deal with most of their board here. And if they shoot off something like shock, then they lose two points damage anyways. Because here the first strike damage comes in, and then I take out the second Furpin Champion. Yeah. So, bit of a waste on their part. They could have done that and gotten in two more points of damage. Um, so because I drew the Red Cat Melee, I'm going to use this now. And then just play out the Myra Trident. It's twice we've milled over exactly Footlight Fiend and Midnight Reaper. Second one of those is annoying, uh, just because they pump each other up. So no blocks here, it's not really profitable for us. So I could claim one of these after... Do just want something like an oven, an oven or woe strider, either or. We did mill over a few, hoping to find one. So we're likely getting ember cleaved here. So they'll probably throw the ember cleave on that. Are they dead? Is a very real question. So they can hit for four damage. So I sacrifice here. I need to keep enough back just in case they re-equip the Ember. You know what? I probably could have... Oh, no, no, no! I did it too early. Crap. Crap. We were supposed to have one more attack. I forgot the first strike damage. Well... That's not what you're supposed to do. I'm just gonna go ahead and take Torbran off the battlefield. That's dangerous for us right now just because any of our creatures dying ends up killing us. I think we could probably still win. We might be able to save this after all. Because this is 9, 10 damage, and then I just sacrifice two things. And yeah, we have oven. Okay, so I punted, but <laughs> we made out okay. Yeah. 
So sweet. One and one with the deck, not too bad. Um, so I'm gonna wrap this one up for the budget version. I'll take it to the mid-budget version and then we can build from there. Uh, as always, if you do enjoy the content, want to show your support, do drop a like or a follow on YouTube or on Twitch as well. They're all free and easy ways to help support the channel. Thanks for stopping by as always and have a great one.